Wow, I am uh, really getting into this turning thing. This is a lot of fun. This is really in there. It's nice and solid. Uh, I have no concerns about uh, things moving around. It locked down really tight, and that's good. Um, I'm happy with this. I think I'm going to finalize the plans. So let me tell you about the things I haven't covered yet. The motor base, the tail stock here, and the tool rest. Well, let's start with this guy. So basic start knob. One of the things that was really important to me about the tool rest is making it more adjustable than before, uh, particularly height adjustment. So I decided to make it out of this one inch uh, threaded rod, just like everything else in the assembly. The base is since it's a one inch eight threaded rod, every rotation of the tool rest will raise it up uh, one eighth of an inch. So you know exactly how much you're moving it by rotating it around. And then also I realized that after I started making it, that if I'm rotating it, I may end up in a position where the back of the tool rest is facing me, but it's at the height that I want. And that's why I have angle iron on here because now it doesn't matter what orientation it's in, I've got uh, the same kind of tool rest on both sides. The way that you tighten it down is basically, there are two pieces here. Uh, this is made out of hardwood and then this, the main face is plywood. And you can see that that hole is off center. And I wish I could say that was intentional, but it's not. As I started drilling this hole, the, every time I went up in drill size to ream this hole out uh, for the larger drill bits, it kept pushing more and more to the soft side and drilling more on this side than this side. So what I probably would do if I was gonna make another one would be to start further over and uh, just let the same action happen but drift more towards the center as opposed to being offset. Uh, I'm not particularly worried about that tearing out. Uh, I have been pushing on it really hard, kind of testing it, and uh, I don't think it's gonna tear out, but you could put it some more meat on this side and uh, glue on another piece to just give you more material here if, uh, if that concerned you and you had the same results. This is basically a, a T-nut that I took out of a piece of furniture that I salvaged. This cut I made on the table saw. So I basically ran it over the table saw to give me this slit so that there's just a tiny bit of slack there. And then when you, that allows you to rotate it easily and then you use this to clamp it down. Uh, this, one more thing, this hole is a little bit undersized. I basically took a piece of threaded rod and you can see here, it's got some slits in it, which makes it behave sort of like a tap. Uh, it's not nearly as good as a tap, but it does, it did help to cut some threads and uh, make the grip just a little bit better. The base is pretty simple. I mean, what you see is what you get. Uh, this threaded rod is epoxied in. I drilled a hole here and here, and I cut this slot out with my jigsaw. Um, and you'll notice that I didn't quite make it to that hole. It's because the blade relative to the front of the jigsaw was a little bit too long and I couldn't quite cut all the way to the back. But it didn't matter. It turns out I've got more than enough adjustment with this slot anyway. So um, it's no big deal. All right, let's move on to the tail stock. As you can see, we've got two uprights and these gussets which support everything. These guys protrude all the way into the second layer of this and touch this third layer. And that's where most of the structural integrity is housed right here through the center. The only challenging part about making this piece is making sure that this hole and this hole are concentric with each other. And then also that those holes are concentric with the headstock. And so you wanna be really careful when you make that part. Now, as far as the guiding system, this rail rides on this tongue here. Uh, I cut this groove the same way I cut the groove for this and so you can watch the previous video to see about that. But the, the way I got this lined up, you see I don't have a drill bit that can drill all the way through uh, this distance here. What I decided to do was go ahead and uh, temporarily fix this on without gluing it. Now these three layers will be glued up at that point and then you can see I have some marks here on the side for reference. And then I took a pencil line and drew all the way around this profile. And then I put screws in the bottom. 
and you can see I didn't put them all back in because I was getting ready to glue it up so at that point I only needed two to make sure I got it back into place but basically I put these screws in glued this piece or excuse me screwed this piece down to the gliding rail at this point I know that this piece is centered about the uh, base for my tailstock and then also that because of the groove in the bottom that this whole base I mean that the whole tailstock is centered about the rail and then I'll go ahead and slide it up and press a little indent into the front of this to mark exactly where that hole should be I screwed these two pieces together and it, it was still square at that point so these cuts are really just decorative um, so it was still square and I ran long screws all the way through both pieces in this corner that I knew I was going to cut off. After that it's pretty easy. Went to the drill press, drill these holes out. Uh, in the plans I call for a washer here. So basically you'll take a steel washer that's got a, a nice big OD and a hole that's smaller than the one inch diameter. And then you're going to drill it out to uh, match the size of the thread or rod that you're using. Once you've drilled it out, you just need to epoxy it onto the face of the lathe tail stock. The last thing I need to show you is the motor base. So let me get this thing turned around so I can show it to you. Here we have the motor base. Uh, all of my electronics are mounted down here on the inside. And as you can see from the side, this is really more of a sub base. I decided to make it this way because they're going to be this gives you the most options, I think, for mounting various motors on top of it. You'll see that in my base, I've added some slots here to match the bolt pattern that's on my motor here. And so this would be an example of a very simple base that's on top of the sub base. Uh, this is what I will expect you to do. Uh, several of you have already purchased the plans, which is awesome. And I know some of you have already have this under construction. But uh, I just want to point out that you could do just about anything you want here. If you want to drill holes in the top, I'll show you one more option here. This is an example of a really simple base that I've put several different motors inside of. And so it's kind of a Frankenstein looking thing because it was made to fit several different motors. The big square washing machine motor fits in this slot here. And then the motor that I got out of the wood chipper uh, fits this face pattern here. But this whole assembly can be just uh, bolted down to the sub base. And then that puts your motor at just the right position. And then all you have to worry about is these slotted holes up here, which allow you to put tension on the belt and then tighten down those bolts. Now, you may be looking at this and wondering why I made this out of MDF. And uh, that's because I just got tired of this material laying around in my shop. But ideally, you'd want to make this out of plywood or even solid wood will be fine uh, for your motor base, actually. I am in such a hurry to get started again that um, I just realized I didn't answer a question that someone sent me. And it's kind of an important one, so let me, let me clarify here. And that's a question about the plans. They were asking if I was selling the plans in parts, like you would buy the plans for the tailstock or for the headstock or where you're getting everything. And the answer is everything. Uh, I think it was just because of the way I presented it in the first video, it kind of sounded like you were buying pieces of it. But uh, you get all, you get basically detailed drawings for all the components and their uh, assembly drawings. So I printed some of them uh, just for reference in the shop. And you can see all the, all the parts are pulled out individually with dimensions on each of them. So it just kind of gives you an idea. I've mostly been using my phone, so some of you may want to just open the PDFs on your phone and you can see uh, this is an assembly level drawing and it's got balloons for all the components. This, in, this one in particular calls out all the fasteners and stuff like that so that you can make sure you've got uh, a good bill of material. Anyway, that's how the plans work. If some of you who have purchased the plans want to jump in and uh, leave your thoughts, that's fine. You can put, post those in the comments. And then also, for the rest of you, if you have questions, feel free to let me know. All right, I'm ready to turn some wood. So uh, I'll see you guys next week, and thank you for watching.